So my name's Mark Simeon Ferguson. I'm a piano player, composer and arranger based here on Ghana land. Like most composers in this day and age, I work across lots of different genres, but jazz is my framework and that I've come from and I'm currently the head of jazz here at the University of Adelaide. So this project is built around these beautiful little shorebirds called the hooded plover. Um, the hooded plover are kind of a, a good example of environmentalism at work. The hooded plover are these beautiful little birds, um, with a little black head, little red things around their eyes, little red beak, spindly legs. And when they're on the beach, um, which they spend a large portion of their lives on the beach, they, they run along and it's hilarious. They just scoot along. Um, they're, you can't see their legs, they're moving so fast. So cute and so beautiful. But the problem is that they nest on the beach. They don't nest in trees. So there's a problem and the, and the little eggs that they do have are uh, cream and black and spotted um, and so you can't see them at all. And that's the danger is that basically you could be walking along the beach and you could be treading on the eggs of these endangered birds and you've got no clue about it. So thankfully um, over the last 20, 30 years, environmentalists and scientists, etc., have got together and found ways to make us aware, first of all, there's birds nesting, keep out. And the beautiful thing is that these endangered birds are increasing in number, like quite dramatically in some areas. So it's a beautiful good news story about environmentalists and works. If we actually work together as individuals, as communities, as governments on these projects, we can actually make a difference and help to bring some creatures back to from the brink of extinction. I was living in Henley South for years and there's actually a little breeding ground in Henley South just on the beach 500 metres from our house and I didn't know it existed. But then we were in Kangaroo Island and I first came across them. I saw these little creatures running along there and that was just actually quite an emotional response. I felt like these are so fragile. I think it's that's the fragility of these birds. They are so small and they're moving so fast and it's just like they almost like seem incredibly nervous. And so I kind of related, I guess, to their, they're running along, you know, and anything could happen, these things could disappear. There could be a dog could come along and, or a cat, and a feral cat's ruining it. So I guess there was that sense of, of wanting to protect something. We live in this, this world where we are constantly bombarded by the dramas of climate change. I mean, it's happening. We're all feeling the effects of it. We've had the hottest days on record and a sequence of them in a row. And we, all, we feel powerless most of the time to do anything about that. You can you know, change the ways that you do things, you know, obviously recycling and all that sort of stuff. But what I loved about the Hooded Plovers was just that story where citizens got together and realised we can do something. These are real things happening that are out there and it's not all doom and gloom. You know, As an individual, my actions can actually make a difference. So um, I've done a lot of writing nature-based music over my time. I feel like the music can be um, useful because it, it gives us a, sometimes it gives us a way into thinking about these creatures and what we could do to support their existence, essentially. Like you know, here we are in the world dominating everything, polluting everything, but there's these tiny little things over there that are completely beholden to us. And if we don't do something about it, they're gone. And those, those species, once they're gone, they're gone forever. I guess what the music is, it's an angle. It's a way of, of drawing people's attention in that, hey, this is something we could be thinking about. And so when you're listening to the music, you might be thinking about, wow, those little birds, they're cute. Oh, they do this thing. Oh, they're endangered. Um, maybe next time I'm on the beach, I'm actually gonna think about not having my dog off the lead. Maybe I'm gonna actually feel like, I don't wanna go four wheel driving on that beautiful um, beach along the Coorong, even though it's really, really fun. But if I drive along there, there's a good chance I might kill a whole bunch of birds. I've written a lot of orchestral music, so I write a lot for strings, but I actually have never written a pure string quartet, just as a string quartet before, and I'm fascinated by the, the field. So my approach, first of all, is a hell of a lot of listening, a lot of study of scores. The way that I like to write is very rhythmic. Obviously coming from a jazz background, and I've done a lot of Latino music as well, so there's gonna, there's, there's gonna be a lot of rhythmic elements in there. There's also gonna be a lot of um, earthier elements, and I love to capture the sounds that are a bit closer to um, the human voice and the, the nature. So I love the scratchy, scrapey sounds that we can find, the circular bowing, we get sitting so and just getting the, all those extra 
um, timbres that are away from the beautiful purity of that's sort of the essence of Western classical music. I like the things that go away, but then I want to go back into the beauty as well. As a composer, honestly, I want people to feel something. When you write music, you want something to happen in there and something to happen in there intellectually, but I, I want an emotional response from an audience. Usually I want them to like the music, of course, but I want them to, to feel the sadness that I was feeling in that moment. I want them to feel the joy that I was feeling at that moment. I want people to walk away feeling like something's happened. You know, we become machines half of the time in our lives, and music is one of those rare places where we can actually, you can feel emotions. You know, sometimes, you, you know, it's not always based on some story about a beautiful little bird, it's just, you just might feel something. It might be something completely unrelated to what the composer was feeling. But if you're impacted in some way, then, then that's a win, I think. I want to feel that I captured what the essence of these birds was. I want to feel that as though people are more aware of these birds. Like, if you don't live by, the, by the, the shore, you probably don't know about these birds. If you do live on the coast, you're completely aware of it because there's beautiful murals everywhere. Every time someone commissions you to do something, it's a sense of validation. It feels like, oh, I've been working really hard, I'm writing this thing, oh, no one's ever gonna hear it. When someone commissions something, you know it's actually gonna get played. And then if you look at someone like the Australian String Quartet, a phenomenal collection of musicians who play with an incredible empathy as, as a group, but they are committed deeply to making the music that they play the best it possibly can be. and they're, definitely want to hear whatever the composer wants to do and they really want to have a, a connection um, with the way that the composer's thinking. They want to, they want it to just to like a, be a, almost a symbiotic relationship. It's like what I write is connected to what the way you're thinking. So it's so important because it makes us feel like we're valued. It's important of course from the point of view of new work needs to be created, new art needs to be created. This is, this is, we are beings who are creative. We need to be out there creating. We need to experience other people creating art. Um, and so we can grow. We need to, um, the views of people a hundred years ago are different to the views and the experiences are different. So new music needs to be written now to reflect the experience that we're having right now. And the string quartet being one of the ultimate Western art music environments to write for, new music's gotta be written for that. And so the ASQ commissioning things is, is uh, an amazing and essential part of, of I guess what they do.